Okay, my friends, welcome back to my channel. So congratulations to all of us. We did it. Uh, you know, for me, of course, as a professional astrologer, it's a very big deal. This is my first presidential election prediction, and it did come true. So, you know, I, I don't want to talk too much about it today, but uh, just yes, congratulations to all of us, uh, you know, people also, of course, who've been praying for this, manifesting this. Uh, and, you know, yes, uh, here we are. You know, again, just want to say that like of course probably there are i hope you know there are some other people who also predicted uh, trump becoming president uh, but from what i know in western especially astrology it's like everybody was calling harry's and even those who were giving a favor to trump they were saying how they are not sure if um it's actually gonna happen or if jd vance will be instead of him i said that yes even though i see jd vance is becoming very important political figure but i don't think that it's his time yet so yeah again you know if anyone else of course predicted this as well congratulations to to them too but i think it's a very big deal that uh you know uh, we have accomplished that and not last minute because of course you know last minute you could see that uh you know like you could feel it maybe in the air i'm not sure in august things were still pretty rough you know it was right i think when my prediction came out it was right at the time when everybody was cheering for kamala when you know like she just i think came out as a candidate right um she, she was just nominated as a candidate so it was much harder i think to make that prediction then uh, anyways though congratulations but actually i'm making this video to talk about some of my you know kind of like pre-inauguration i guess predictions for what uh we can expect from trump over the next what is it four years right and i also want to talk about what can we learn right because whether we you know we can make mistakes right i don't think that you know even though I, I do think that it, sh it should we should we should have not had such a low rate of accuracy in predictions in Western community. I think it made us all look, you know, very bad because people are always, you know, skeptical, right, of astrology, call it bullshit and all these different things. And, you know, for some people, it's true. It's just a content cre creation game. They made accounts first, then became astrologers. But for others of us, we respect, you know, we spent many, many hours, many years for a lot of us before we even made any YouTube channels like me personally. I think I waited like six or seven years to even make a YouTube channel to see like if you know I'm gonna be able to do it well and did donation consultations when I had my back in the day when I had my finance job when I went to college and these days it's very different you know people blow up online you know they haven't even worked with any clients yet you know consultation already like five hundred dollars and it's very different and you know like uh, for me personally, it's sometimes a little bit offensive anyway to not get distracted. Essentially, what I want to say is that let's, w whether we make a correct prediction or whether we make a mistake, what's important is always, of course, to see what we can learn from the experience, right? And uh, there are a few conclusions I was able to, uh, you know, kind of like come up with, c come, come to, um, based on, you know, th this prediction looking at you know why was i able to get it right versus why other people who were focusing on the diet club releasing and other different things were not able to get it right and i want to share some of these conclusions with you uh, in this video so yeah and content creators who want to be astrologers uh, can learn something from this experience too again it's always about learning and anyway essentially number one conclusion that i uh, came to when i looked kind of like at, at, at everything is that you know first of all you have to always remember that a strong horoscope will always beat a weak horoscope even if in a strong horoscope we have maybe more difficult periods versus weak horoscope with super strong periods like think about it like this you have a boxing match you know and a stronger person even if he feels not so good on that day even if it's not, you know, if he's not so lucky, even if conditions are not favorable to him, will always beat the, the, the weaker person on a ring, right? If you think of boxing, something, I don't know, competition. Does it kind of make sense? Because that's how I was thinking about it. This is how I was looking at this at the first place. Because I was like, you know, I understand, right, that like Kamala has a weak horoscope compared to Trump. Again, everything is based on comparison, right? but like she has very strong time periods yes i agree with that there were some transits that were very favorable to her but not even all of them there was some you know like saturn on her current 
not so favorable necessarily some other ones you know jupiter never really even those people who were referring to jupiter right over here ascendant it never really touched i believe the degree of your ascendant so even that uh was not you know enough and even other things but essentially even if we look at it from the perspective right she has all these strong uh, activations in her chart i believe in like if you look at it from a sidereal perspective he ha she had a lot of different raj yogas powerful yogas activating at the time but even though she had all these strong activations the whole fact that she's even running against someone like donald trump is the peak of her career i know it sounds maybe a little bit mean but it's the reality uh he's a highly accomplished person no who was president once already like yes and you know again people like him people dislike him let's not go there let's keep it astrological but he is a powerful figure you cannot deny that he was not even a politician you know he became president of the united states against the laws now he became president against the laws right second time even when all celebrities all the media were against him he won the support of groups that you could not even imagine him winning he was very very even you know some people can say he was radical in some of his statements he was not afraid to do things and to say things that other people were scared to to say he said that he stands with israel you know he said we'll deport homos protesters kamala was desperately clinging to trying to appease right the, the, the trying to gain voters right from the pro-palestinian crowd etc right but you know it's like it never didn't even that didn't work for her even arabs and muslims favor trump over her so like it's out of desperation that he did so many things but it still didn't work and again this goes back to let's go back let's 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 uh, go back to astrology here again the fact that she like all the strong periods strong yogas that were activating for her the way i saw it and this was my initial thought too is the whole fact that she is even running the whole fact that she is even a vice president that is you know what it means not that she will be trump and become president so yeah i thought that this was actually you know pretty pretty straightforward so again the horoscope itself needs to be looked at and i think that like a lot of people were always oh, too simple but you know again this is like where the art of reading something i think comes in you need to know even if you know a lot when to not over complicate it because again it's like some people will say right but trump uh, has a strong chart but he lost to biden in 2020 compared to kamala the biden has much stronger chart let me tell you that i mean here of course it will go i don't, don't want to go back into 20, 2020 it, maybe it would be like a separate video if i have time but essentially yeah first we are looking at the strength of the horoscope itself and then also transits are important again maybe it's me and not others but i just do not think that the diacal releasing in um, order of importance of techniques is that important i don't know if that's the correct way <laughs> to say that maybe if we wanted to get like additional details about something we could look at it but i honestly again i don't want to completely invalidate this as technique but i'm just going to give you a secret i don't really look into it like there is nothing there necessarily that i feel like i'm gonna find that i'm not gonna find using uh you know looking looking at transits looking at even okay secondary progressions mm, i don't know transits are important for sure and uh, you know again i'm not sidereal technically i do know it not like proficiently proficiently but like kind of you know i i know a lot about it um one technique that i will say is fa always always fascinating to me how accurate it is as, as well is of course mahadashas and Tradashas that they use in sidereal vedic it is inc incredibly important as well in hierarchy of techniques i don't want to say that it's going to be more important than transits but it, it will tell us a lot about what is the time period of a person's life all about and also which planet in the horoscope is the most active right because planets activation happens in different ways as well of course secondary progression is a very good technique for that as well but again not to mix techniques but i will like let's just say i will look more i will do another chart and rather look into mahadashas than look at the sidereal uh sorry then look at the diacal releasing okay 
Um, in fact, there was a joke I was saying that like after after this election prediction cycle, I was thinking about changing from Western to sidereal because of what everybody was saying. I was like, no, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be <laughs> in that crowd. So, yeah, no, tropical still works. You just need to know what you're doing. That's that's all. Another thing is, of course, very important is fixed stars in the astrology chart. This is something that I always focus a lot on. If you've been following me for a while, if you're the OG, you know that I always pay a lot of attention to some like more rare maybe things like uh like fixed stars obviously they're not rare uh and again i'm just gonna give you also something like a, some something a little extra something that i've observed is that fixed stars especially the ones that have to do with leo regulus of course is trump star his ascendant literally is on regulus and so is jd vances in the realm of politics it will always beat any any i would even say any other fixed star like if you have other fixed stars which are powerful too, Regul, Regulus, uh, sorry, Regulus, Regulus will always, um, it literally represents, right, the heart of the lion, the paw of the lion, right, the, like, the, the lion's power, so to say, lion the king, you know, all of those things, it will always win most of the time at least another thing that's also very important is directional strength of planets directional strengths of planets and also just overall you know like uh, we need to look at how many planets are actually in their own houses how many planets are in their own signs strength of planet all that good stuff because again like if you have two people let's just say with debilitated sun or two people let's just say with the sun that lacks directional strength and they are running against each other this is of course one thing versus what I've been saying the entire time is that if you have somebody with a son that's powerful and son is connected to politics, we of course need to always assess it and it has directional strength, it has other good aspects versus the son of somebody who is debilitated and also doesn't have directional strength, doesn't really have you know, anything that saves it even that much. Um, it's also pretty obvious. Again, like, let's see, let me use the same, I'm going to be using the same, um, not ideology, how do you say this, this the same method, methodology, ideology, methodology to future predictions. Let's see if it's going to stay consistently correct. Because again, it's like, even if you get something wrong, you can, as long as you learn from it, you know, like, because a lot of people, they, they don't even want to say that, like, oh, they were wrong and why. Okay, so, yeah, and of course, you know something my favorite thing probably in the world make common sense you know make common sense great again using common sense and uh yeah like kind of not not overlooking um the obvious so to say so i think that's that's pretty important too and you know some people were saying that like oh people were not making predictions during this election cycle they were just sort of um very biased and you know like kind of like saying that their candidate is going to win i cannot speak of course for others even though i the, the, there were a lot of walk astrologers i could definitely see that it was obvious that you know the reasons why they were making the predictions they were making i'm just going to say about myself yes i support it support donald trump uh and uh, the reason why i even decided to make uh, an election prediction is because i wanted to see is he actually going to win or not because i really really w wanted him to win and uh like i you know was praying for him all, all that good stuff and uh, when you know the july assassination attempt happened that really kind of like you know was on my nerve because yes i knew that mars uranus al Gol was going to be something difficult for him it was not my public prediction but you know mars uranus of course you know we knew that some shocking event uh was coming most people at least in the astrology community and when that thing happened when i actually saw that thing happen of course you know just many people in america i was shocked and i started really looking into this extra so yeah after the july event you know that's why my prediction was posted like first week uh, of august or something like that uh, after the July event, because of the shock, you know, that I had, I was like, okay, let's see what the fuck is going on. And I was like, let's see if he's actually going to win. When I opened his chart, I saw that, yes, it, absolutely, he has all the chances of winning. So I was like, okay, why not? Let's, you know, I never, I've never done it before. Let me make, you know, my first uh, astrology election prediction, you know, because I did have, like, I was pretty confident, to be honest, in it as well. And uh, yes, I was especially happy, of course, to post it, uh, you know, it's given to that everybody was saying, oh, you were so biased, you just wanted him to win. Yeah, I mean, it does doesn't mean that I didn't want him to win but I essentially for those of you who are wondering how I arrived at the decision is like I um, 
like I saw that it's gonna happen and I wanted it to happen too and I was just happy and excited and I was, I was like let's make a prediction too because I, I think I'm gonna I think he's gonna win I see evidence of that I want him to win you know and uh, plus I was also like you know I was I, I didn't really watch other people's prediction but I kind of was looking at a lot of this clicking on a lot of this videos having them show up in my feed how everybody was predicted for Kamala to win and I was like no okay let's let's do it so this is why I decided to post it I'll be honest with you if I would see something different let let's just say if I opened the chart and saw Kamala winning I probably would not make a prediction and not post it on YouTube <laughs> you know, because that's depressing and uh, yeah essentially like explaining to you know because people were like accusing me of being biased or it's just like whatever you just got lucky or something no it was more like uh, you know I looked into it after July event like less very seriously looked into it not just you know kind of like playing with it but very seriously looked into it and once I saw that he wins I'm like there you know even though again like I never really got into politics on my channels not like I hide it but it's just you know never never really had opportunity even to be honest to discuss it and I was like okay this is a great time plus I'll be honest spiritually as well I wanted us to to I felt like you know once it happened in July what what he went through right with this attempted assassination I just wanted also to be more vocal as well in my support for him I felt like that's the least I could do even though Oh, yes there were many people crazy women mainly like older women who, who are not even american citizens by the way who don't even live in america who were telling me how dare i support you but whatever they don't even live in our country like see this is this is the definition of taking your country back right so to say because people who don't even live here think that they can tell us who we should vote for fuck off anyway so yeah there is that so yes essentially if i did see kamala winning instead i would just not post it because i don't you know i don't want my first public you know as an astrologer first public presidential election prediction to be about the candidate that i would never in my life support or endorse in any way so again maybe this is wrong i i, I don't know to be honest i would just not do it because again remember please that i never made political predictions really before uh so i wanted my first one to be the one i actually feel proud to make happy that it actually yes aligned with desired outcome truly fully and another funny thing is that actually Donald in Donald Trump's chart I have very interesting synastry with him like I have Juno south node midhaven exactly conjunct Trump's ascendant yes I have Juno 29 regular south node uh, zero uh, Virgo and uh, midhaven 29 regulars as well so I thought that you know all the stars aligned together and yeah anyway very happy for it congratulations to us now let's go into some of my predictions for his presidency so here again there's multiple things we can look at in this video i'll probably make more i want to focus on the chart of inauguration um and uh, here it's a little bit tricky because i already posted my initial predictions before we even knew right who was going to be president in that video from august i discussed donald trump's chart Kamala Harris chart day of, of inauguration astrology just day of it because again there is no specific timing but what's what's happening throughout the day and it was kind of I don't know again because there's no actual chart the prediction itself th there was not anything specific I said there I just said that yeah it's chaotic whatever but nothing really happened so much and you know we didn't really have any kind of chart now uh, a part of that video I also talk about the inauguration itself on January 20th 2025 and uh, something that happened in the chart again we didn't know yet if Trump was going to select uh, be selected president we didn't know who was going to become the president of the United States so I was kind of just saying that yeah even based on the um, chart of inauguration I see that somebody who will become president will be very very focused on our border security you know essentially changing all the like kind of redoing because Mars is retrograde Mars is the ruler of that chart redoing kind of like making a major redo of, of immigration deportations whatever all these other things focus very much on financial as well uh, well-being of the country changes that need to be to be made and I thought that all of that definitely points to Trump not to Harris obviously because you know she she was you know, they say the borders are right so the border crisis currently that we experience thanks to her legacy and essentially yes there is that so based on also that chart I was able to conclude this was my additional factor strengthening my confidence that he was going to become president but now let's look at the actual chart so here is very very important detail that I want to mention first of all when I was initially looking at the chart for some reason I opened it for 11 a.m January 20th 2025 11 a.m Washington DC and of course it gave us Aries rising with Mars retrograde in the fourth house and uh, I don't know why I did it for 11 a.m to be honest but 
I was told that it's actually the actual inauguration should be taking place at 12 p.m. So this would be the chart of 12 p.m. Now, I do not know why, <laughs> I'll be honest, the chart from 11 a.m. kind of makes more sense to me. Again, I'm not saying that this is the chart I'm going to like kind of stay, stay with, stay, but there's something about this chart that makes more sense to me. However, I will look at the 12 p.m. chart too. Because, and essentially we're doing all of this right before inauguration. Let's see when inauguration actually happens, what time he gets sworn in. I will write down the exact time. And, and based on the time that I'm going to write down, when he actually takes an oath, I think this is, we, sh we should consider that exact moment of actually him standing and taking, taking an oath uh, to become 37th president of the United States. We will count that specific moment up to the second, if possible, as the inauguration chart uh, of 47th president. Right now, again, I don't want to just say it's 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. or whatever, and maybe this is totally where I'm tripping, but like I'm, I'm not very good at this kind of stuff, you know, but like uh, like once I have the chart, I can, I can figure it out. But yeah, let's do this kind of like draft, so to say, prediction. And then once he gets inaugurated and I have the exact birth time, I will either not redo them, but like I, I will actually make a, an actual additional video what I see very specifically, because in the inauguration chart of president, we can see very specific things about what awaits, you know, the people of the United States of America for the next four years. Now, I want to say something once again, before we go into the chart too, is that my, like, I can already make some predictions based on, you know, just various different things I'm observing. I do believe that you know, even though right now still there are many people, even though he won landslide, honestly, I did not think that it was going to be that big because not because I didn't think that he was going to be supported, to be honest, but because more so I did expect that there's still going to be some election fraud here and there. So I don't know if it was there or not, but even if it was, you can see that he won landslide, right? Uh, and anyway, still there are some like feminists crying, which I, I don't know, to be honest, why? Uh, because, you know, they're crying because they're brainwashed, really. That's, that's, that's the problem. But I do believe, actually, this is the prediction I'm making, that in his four years, there will be a turning point, which I know sounds crazy right now, where everybody who, I don't, well, maybe not everybody, but where a lot of people, let's say, who were against him before, will actually recognize him as oh wow you know they will open their eyes will be opened you know not to, to 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 sound biblical because again i said this before even me myself i used to hate him so much and then there was this moment where i just saw him in a very different light i saw i saw the truth but you know about what's going on with the country what's happening and uh, at first i thought there was crazy people who believed that but you know, like I, I can see it now and I think there will be a lot more people who will start seeing through all this illusion the illusion will start breaking and they will actually again I don't want to say everyone because of course there's always somebody who doesn't like you but there will be many people who will start to support him much more so maybe he will even become like one of the greatest presidents of the United States you know in his legacy well america like will be reborn it's like literally you know not to sound biblical but it's literally like of biblical biblical proportions he is like kind of like this energy of all this you know do you read about all this biblical kings right you no know, king this king that king, like don't want to give specifics but he has this kind of reach and some people will say, oh, how can you say he's all these bad things? But, you know, those biblical kings you read about, if you if you go into the details of various things they've done, uh, various marriages to many people, he was married three times. There are people who were married more than that. You know, they are not, um, like, uh, from your perspective of, right, so perfect either, so to say. And actually, this one in particular is less of astrology, but there was a recurring vision I was having about him before he even got elected. I think he was already running at that point. But for whatever reason, I had this recurring vision about him. And uh, we all know, right, he has very good relationship with uh, uh, Crown Prince, not King yet, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, what's his name, Mohammed bin Salman, MBS. Very, very, very interesting Crown Prince. There is something about him, them too, and also Israel, which probably in a good, in a hopeful scenario, Saudi Arabia will be joining uh, Abraham Accords, uh, which for those who don't know, Abraham Accords is essentially 
the normalization of relationship between United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, I think something else, uh, Israel, you know, prosperity for all in the region. There were talks before with Saudi Arabia, which got sabotaged, of course, every, with everything that happened last year with that shit show that they made. Um, there is something about this MBS and him. I had this vision, essentially, that he, MBS and Trump stand together. MBS is pulling this, like, big golden key with, like, some kind of light. I don't know what it means. It's, and again, when I share this vision, please remember that it could be literal, but it could be most likely, obviously, metaphorical. And so somehow he pulls this key and next kind of like, I guess, cutscene or whatever I'm seeing is that there is something about the building of third temple in Jerusalem. I don't know. I see the actual temple, but I don't know if it's a physical temple again, or it's maybe just the symbol of, I don't know, some kind of great, like, I don't know, great, great return. Uh, peace in the region, third temple, right, they refer to it in biblical prophecies with this golden you. And I don't know, again, this might be, I'm not saying that this is literal, maybe it's metaphorical, but this is something I see. There's definitely going to be very interesting Trump and BS and their remaining countries, uh, you know, with, with the Middle East situation, there's going to be a lot of a very big focus on that. And I do believe that Trump is going to be traveling also a lot. Um, during his presidency, may, very big focus on foreign policy. There is going to be very big f focus, and you know how he's travel. He was traveling right so much. Um, you know, on all their rallies every day. He's like, I don't even know how he, how like how he can do this. God bless him, of course, for that. But he will be traveling a lot, um, like foreign foreign trips. There will be a lot of foreign trips, focused on you know resolving all these international problems most likely and even though yes there is going to be a very big focus i feel like he will have no choice but there will be a big focus on all these foreign situations it's not going to be like before it's going to be america first he will use interests like he will somehow not use americans in the interests of other countries how it was with previous administration but it's going to be the opposite he will use certain advantages we might be having right now whether it's i don't know with whatever reasons might be it's not so important he will use his position of power which you know shouldn't be too hard because america is a powerful country only an idiot can you know can be destroying it running into the ground so he will use, um, so, you know, our power, our still remaining power in the world to get very good deals, negotiate very good foreign deals for foreign situations. And he will put, I believe him that he will put American interests first, American people's first to make us richer, to make us more prosperous, more secure. I feel like he will get it done. Now, when it comes to promises he made during, <laughs> you know, election season, I do think that when it comes to illegal deportations, they will happen. Uh, and I think he will get it done relatively fast, first year, within first year, maybe even like less than a year, something like that. It will be very big focus. When it comes to, I know he made a promise to end Russia-Ukraine war before he even gets uh, to the office. I don't want to say he will not get it done. I wish, I, I honestly really want that war to end. Like it, it's awful and horrible. And I don't know if he will get that done necessarily. But I do believe that in that Russia-Ukraine situation, there will be a resolution. I would need to, again, look at horoscopes of Russia and Ukraine both. It would need to be a separate video, obviously, because we would need to see when is it exactly going to happen. If it happens fast, great. Yes, I do definitely see the kind of like winding down, so to say, of operations when it comes to that region, much less probably activity there. But I don't see the complete end there yet. And if I'm wrong, like I'll be very happy if I am. Um, but definitely there is a change. You know how, in the, especially in the remaining month, Democrats were instigating, right, sending more. And again, I'm not, I have nothing against Ukraine. I love Ukraine. I wish them peace, love, prosperity. There are many friends, Ukrainians, even relatives I have, uh, and Russian too. But they were doing this. They were essentially trying to provoke Putin more and more and more. Uh, and not in a good way, because if that situation blows out of proportion, it will be American first troops paying the hard price for this with their lives. And second, us, you know, 
like here because who knows the, P Putin is a crazy fuck once uh, one thing I can tell you so essentially what I'm really seeing is that there is a change from this them essentially like instigating that situation how they were doing it past few years to more of like let's solve things through diplomacy and again this is by the way another reason why I was predicting Trump because when I was looking at Russia Ukraine situation I was like there is gonna be maybe not the end of war but I see shift to diplomacy and of course this will never happen with Dem Democrats party of war this will this will happen with somebody like Trump where they will start moving more towards negotiations what's happening with lands blah 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 all that stuff so that was by the way you know another uh, additional factor that made me confident that it should be Trump so there is that so yeah Russia Ukraine war again if he gets it done like he promised before he even goes into office I'll be so happy I'll be the happiest person in the world however uh, I, I don't know I'm not certain that it's gonna happen if I'm honest now another thing is going back to co topic of um, you know uh, foreign deals and all of that so we talked about it, Israel we talked about uh, Middle East a little bit we talked a little bit about Russia Ukraine now there is something 26 27 a lot of people are predicting World War 3 I don't think it's World War 3 I have my own opinion <laughs> again wait for Neptune Neri's video what is likely going to be but i do believe that in europe there is some kind of crisis that could be happening where united states might step in you know and this might be actually trump's legacy he, the role he will play in the future in some kind of very big war which is not our war and we did not instigate it you know i mean maybe some of the previous policies and actions of people like bush and obama created the situation in the first place because of what they did in the Middle East and all the migrants who then spread freshly radicalized also and escaped war situations to Europe and England B but yeah not not any kind of conflict or war that we instigated like they did when they sponsored Iranian regime removing sanctions and making Iran rich as fuck so those could sponsor all their you know sugar babies I call them the sugar babies of Iranian regime and neither like what was happening also with Russia Ukraine and other war instigated by the neocons too uh, but no actually in Europe there's something happening that again I don't think it's related to Russia Ukraine I could be wrong but there is something that I think could be more so because of something internally maybe extremism uh, internally again I don't want to be like a saying how like all the immigrants who live there are dangerous it's not my intention to say but there are certain things that are happening in europe and in england and i know a lot of you who live there know exactly what i'm fucking talking about something related to that and also related to something in the middle east something maybe related to israel could be still unfortunately especially year 25 26 I, I don't know how it's gonna work exactly but there is still calamity in that region even though again it's gonna be going better it should start normalizing but I wonder you know in when was uh, Abraham Accords passed I forgot what year was it was it 2019 2020 I know that I was praying actually you know at the grave of Abraham in Hebron which is West Bank it's a very dangerous uh, region you have to go there on like bulletproof bus and it's a very holy place there considered very holy to all the Jewish people and because it's considered to, ho to Jewish people holy it's considered to Muslims also holy because again they both consider Abraham right Abraham in in Islam uh, they're they're not founding father but you know what you know what I mean and uh, there's always conflict there so anyway when I was there in 2018 I was praying you know for peace in the Middle East it's my biggest dream probably in life but uh, one one of them I'm not gonna say it's the biggest but one of them for the world at least and uh, Abraham Accords passed you know and I was not even Trump supporter at that time yet you know like people say you're a Trump supporter yeah I was not yet I was a Democrat then uh, I don't even think I realized that that happened you know like it took me a while to even learn that oh they passed Abraham Accords um, and after that I do think that many people didn't like it because again there are many people who do not want any of these issues in the Middle East to resolve the benefit from you know adding how they say adding fire to the fuel many you have no idea really what role United States played in that and in you know European countries too so there's something about maybe in Israel actually there will be improvement of situation and as a result of that I don't know some bad actors want to sabotage it again um, meaning like maybe they resolve the Palestinian issue you know like which honestly could have been resolved if if people were had interest in resolving that which is not Israel but 
many other countries who were very fake friend to Israel and you know the fact that Palestinians are used as a like a a sacrificial lamb of other Islamic republics it's it's not it, you need to be stupid to not see it so there's for both for both people unfortunately bad uh, puppeteers have created this bad situations so I wonder if it's going to start resolving and because of that something's going to start blowing up with maybe even Muslims in Europe I have no idea like it, it we would need to look at horoscopes of countries for that to understand and connect the dots more but I don't think it's the third world war or war related to Russia Ukraine so yeah that one of course we will need to look into more but whatever it is let's let's go back to because we're talking about Trump here I think that he will have a chance to really show power American might and actually like you know many people don't know that after World War II actually United States could have dominated the world completely if it wanted to but it didn't it wanted actually to give other countries you know you know their own like prosperity like United States did very well after World War II that's why we had so much prosperity as well um, of course we also gained lifelong allies don't forget that but United States was leading with you know strength peace through through strength is it called right and then of course things change and I believe things change sometime between uh, not the junior Bush but the the older Bush what's his name and Clinton that that's when the dark stuff started happening you know with Saturn Neptune Uranus there in Capricorn oh yeah like Clinton and then what was after Clinton Bush right two terms Obama you know you think they are different you're naive if you think that Joe Biden and uh, essentially like those presidents right I don't you know the foreign policy was very exploitative in my opinion I think what Trump is gonna do when there is some kind of global conflict might be emerging is he gonna show the United States truly being this Lion King country where we're not exploding any other countries but we are actually doing something good like truly living up to the purpose uh, and not exploiting you know anything because I personally do believe that you know United States right a serious son it does have a purpose it was given the greatness the you know the resources what it was given to fulfill certain purpose in the world and that purpose I believe is related to Nostradamus predictions take a guess which one I'm referring to but actually fulfill that not exploit it not you know like be an actual bad actor and uh, the founding fathers right they drafted the constitution like they did everything the way they did which United States was built upon many rituals you, uh, for all of you Christians out there uh, founding fathers were Freemasons it's a well-known fact so you know uh, they knew what they were doing and essentially I believe that that purpose that United States has could be at least partially fulfilled when this event in 26 27 28 in the world is unfolding I also see for whatever reason United States gaining territories now this not necessarily the the, the prophecy so to say for Trump's um, you know term but maybe it could be the next one or within the next 20 years United States could gain some territories either in form of something with England again I'm not saying the entire England but something something with England I have no idea how it works or Canada uh, could be I don't know how it's gonna work it sounds it's very it's like but it's just something about United States actually growing its territory no not through like military presence and bases but actually growing territory somehow I don't know how it's gonna work anyway maybe it's too early to to be making that but just for whatever reason I remembered that um, so there is that so yes and essentially yes Trump is gonna be able to show truly his might and strength in a beautiful way where everybody will be even people who had negative view of him maybe that's the event will have a positive view of him now now one thing I do want to say however is that he still needs to be careful the next six months all the way to I would say summer 20 which year we are into summer 2025 again I'm not gonna say that something bad is gonna happen to him I think honestly if ever that summer July was the worst but he still needs to be careful I'm just gonna be honest um, until summer until the fall the first five six months of his presidency because I do think media will continue attacking him still 
And you know, it's just like uh, if you're somebody who supports him, please pray for him. Don't worry about him, but pray for him. Worrying, actually, according to you know Kabbalah, something I recently learned. I didn't even know about this. Uh, weakens people's auric shield. You know, so try not to worry about him. Try to you know, like send him peace, light, and uh, hopefully it's, uh, it's just gonna be like some minor little things or nothing at all. Another prediction I want to make is that I do believe that the next, I said this before already, but I do believe that the next president after Trump will be a Republican as well. It could likely be J.D. Vance, but again, we will, of course, need to look at this closer to <laughs> to the election based on who is running. You know, other people, of course, could be running, but I definitely feel like he has very high chances of running and winning. So I did say that the Republicans should be there at least for two terms. And again, they won everything. They won the Senate, I believe, the House, right? Uh, you know, the president. So I do believe that uh, next term, the next four years are going to be something, something similar to that, very likely. And I just wonder, I'm just going to ask this. Could he be somehow very, like, again, if everything goes well, next six months is critical. It's very important for him to be safe, to do well in the next six months. And then, you know, if like 26 27 you know everything is still going well i'm just curious if there is any possibility how you know if obviously he cannot run third term right but could he somehow still stay very much in power because in his horoscope it's like he's just getting started i don't know what it is he's like uh he's not 80 but yes he's what 78 like he's at his 80s but it's like he has a lot of, you know, he has a lot still to do. Yes, he has still a lot to do here, obviously, in the United States. But I also see him being an important and powerful figure somehow with whatever was going to be happening in Europe and also whatever is going to be happening in the Middle East, in Israel specifically. You know, he was the one who moved uh, Israel's embassy from, what was it, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, right? I don't know why. Again, this was probably, probably just... Um, you know, a vision of symbolic, maybe my own imagination, but for whatever reason, I see this, uh, like something related to this prophesized, you know, third temple. And there was another vision I actually had, you know, if the conflict, like, it, again, it could be metaphorical, it's most likely is metaphorical, but I actually saw like, something with this conflict, which actually could be escalating once again between Iran, in this case, and Israel like what looks concerning to me is time period leading into the full moon on november 15. like yes this full moon this crazy full moon i'll make a separate video on this on november 15 like just now weeks after the election looks very concerning to me for israel iran situation and again there, there's been going it's been non going none none how say ongoing right non-stopping thing but supposedly right iran right now will be attacking israel now, November 15, full moon is on Algol and conjunct Uranus, which happens to be Israel's sun. So I wonder if something crazy will be happening again, another attack. Um, but also for whatever reason, I was getting this vision. I don't know if it's happening now or like within the next years that if these conflicts keep escalating or maybe there's just isolated attack in Jerusalem, you know, that um, what is that? The Temple Mount? that there is that mosque right that exists there that it's damaged it's not gonna be like israel's fault but it's gonna be like one of those rockets if because they should constantly send the rockets there so one of these rockets that either iran any one of their puppets uh, or how is the proxies not puppets proxies gonna send might actually hit their own mosque there so I don't wish, of course, for that to happen. I absolutely hope that people just become, stop being fundamentalists and radicals and, you know, become normal. Uh, but th that was the vision I had. Maybe it is symbolic. Maybe it's not literally symbolic because, again, a lot of visions I have, they end up kind of representing something symbolically. Like, I'll share with you a dream I had actually right before the election two nights before election essentially it was a bizarre dream i was in the middle of the ocean it's like everything was ocean it was only water um actually you know if you know tarot card judgment tarot card it kind of looks like that because if you look at the judgment tarot card you will see right there is all this water and then you see graves <laughs> right and essentially in that dream i saw myself in this ocean swimming and there were two graves that i was swimming to which were graves of my like teachers in kabbalah 
so again obviously metaphorical but i was thinking what does it mean right first of all or anybody who is considered right sadikim within kabbalah and in judaism too represents energy of mercy right has it water as well represents mercy so i was wondering if maybe there was some kind of mercy you know that was about to be bestowed you know uh, on the world myself included you know like fingers crossed right and essentially i was in this ocean and i was swimming to the to the graves of my teachers and i felt incredible happiness like it literally you know like who knows resurrection of that type of uh, scene again probably it is metaphorical no uh but uh, it was it was intense and i felt so happy and then i think like the days after that drop one like i personally was very happy about this i know some people are not but most i think are looking at how people voted at least um so there is that what else i was gonna say so yeah i said that there is going to be multiple terms of republicans even with trump somehow staying in power again i know he cannot be uh you cannot be in america elected for more than two terms right so i don't know how it's gonna work not sure again these things we will need to look closer to the time so yes of course economic reform very big uh will it be fixed immediately probably not but there will be a very big focus on economic reform if you look at chart whether we're looking chart for 11 a.m for 12 p.m very big focus because uranus is still in taurus on the, at the moment of inauguration very big focus on economic reform and especially whether it's on ascendant by the way or in second house depending on different chart i would still read it similarly very 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 big focus on alliances and you know a lot of people think of him as dictator or something no he will actually he will lead negotiations in such a smart way through trade through diplomacy through knowing you know i think he was at this one podcast what's his name the guy um god almighty the po- what's the name of that guy he's like a russian jew um uh, Friedman something and he said that yeah sometimes you need to know right when to use the carrot versus the stick in negotiations I think he will do brilliantly big focus on um, uh, foreign policy also yes again let's see what time inauguration happens if it's going to be he's going to be sworn exactly at 12 p.m or other time because there is also something about huge health reform that could be but at the same time i do have to warn you too something i do hope there is no other pandemic <laughs> no for that we will have to wait for when he actually inaugurates because this will be speculation if i don't have exact seconds minutes yeah. like we will need that but big focus on health of our nation of course rfk jr is going to be responsible for health reform my fear though and again this is not to become paranoid but i wonder because they let him win too easily you know it gives me naturally a lot of paranoia because i i know i i know what to expect from these people i wonder if the big pharma um or whoever will unleash any kind of new experimental you know juju like in 2020 um because 2020 this was biological weapon that was there it was not just a random virus that coincided with Trump's presidency and right before election, right? No. Um, so that's my only concern. Let's hope it doesn't happen again. Let's for that also wait for the actual, you know, inauguration moment. Uh, and then based on like up to minutes, up to seconds short, I will be able to hopefully tell more. Yeah, so I think this is for now. This is it again. Let's wait for inauguration. The next video about this I'm going to make after the inauguration. Let me know also what uh, questions you have. I'm happy to answer them. Comment them down below. Subscribe, share my video. Tell your friends that not all astrology is fake. And there are some people who actually were able to get it right. Because again, I get infuriated when people start saying, oh, all astrology is bullshit. Nobody predicted correctly. No, it's your TikTok astrologers who probably didn't predict it correctly they all devastated crying oh my god what happened just yeah anyway um essentially yeah so let me know and we will talk about this again once we have exact moment of integration i will be more confident with some may or be specific predictions right now this is just sort of like a draft uh, to you know to just talk about this because frankly i'm still so tired sleep deprived you know i look not like in my normal self i look super exhausted my hair is all over the place but yeah once i rest a little bit it's going to be better i cannot talk to be honest about anything else right now so like but yeah i'm happy to share this news with you and i'm happy that we got it right it's a big moment for me honestly it's like it's a big deal to be making presidential election astrology um you know it's not some because you know it's 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 a big deal i think it's a more it's an important moment in the life of every astrologer to 
uh, to, you know, and of course, it's my first one. Let's hope I'm going to be able to continuously predict these things in the future, too. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for joining. Love you all. I'm very happy and uh, sending you all love and blessings. And I hope that all these people who are crying now <laughs> because they were brainwashed, you know, as, as heavily as they were, let's send them all also love, peace. And let's hope that, you know, God Almighty, as, as, you know, as religious people like to say, will open their eyes indeed and they will see that uh, they should be not crying right now, but they should be happy, really. Thanks so much. We'll talk soon. Bye.